prior to Snowfall, I play a lot of doctors and moms. So to just like bust out and be this bounty hunter slash stripper was just fun. And of course, working with Damson, Idris, and the rest of the cast, I have been a fan of Snowfall for so many years and had auditioned so many times. Um, so I was just really excited to be a part of John Singleton's legacy. Uh, Black Diamond was just a lot of fun. I, I think it was nice to bring a little bit of even comic relief to the show when we joined in season four, me and uh, Dallas, who's played by Taylor Polidor. Um, what's fun, I love that she's fierce. She's about her money. She's about taking care of her kids and her family. She's about opportunity. She's about moving on up. I think my favorite moments were scenes where it was a lot of us in a scene. Because a lot of the times it was just me and Dallas or me, Dallas, and um Franklin. But there were sometimes, I think in season five, there was a moment where it was like, it was Leon, it was Uncle Jerome, Aunt Louie, it was mom, you know, it was Bernie. So we were all in this room and you can't, that that long of a shoot day, there's just jokes happening. You know, people are teasing each other, like, you know, we're in high school. So those are the most fun. There were long days, but the most fun. D. Ray Davis, my gosh, you know, just I would love when he would be on set because I knew like I was going to laugh that day. So those are some of my favorite times. Blair, you didn't tell us. You didn't tell us. You didn't tell us where it is. She's telling the truth. She's telling the truth. Oh, yeah? Yes. Hey, stop fucking hitting her. We don't know. You tell me where my goddamn money at. You're a fan of the show. You know, Jerome wanted Black Diamond and Dallas gone since season four when we shot up the funeral and, uh, and Aunt Louie got shot. Um, unintentionally, but, you know, it happened. Um, so just the, the how brutal it was. Um, when I read the script, I was like, God, this is brutal. And then just being there on set and being in position and, and, and shout out to Eamon Joseph, who's just so amazing, such a consummate professional, but he's in it. When he's at work, he's in it. And so, but still being gentle, you know, but even scenes where we would cut, you know, moments when we would cut and they would give him what they call a blood bag. That's a bag, you know, with blood stuff and splatter. So when he's punching it, it looks like he's punching me, but he's actually punching the bag and that's what's splattering. Just even standing by and watching him do that and take the rage and anger out on the bag, knowing that's my face. So when I when we went to the premiere, it was... It was intense. It was intense. And um, yeah, that's all I can say. But I think it it told the story. Mabel has triggered a lot of people. I know I, I get that from the uh, comments, from, from all of social media. But my whole thing is um, I was excited to play Mabel because I knew she would be triggering. And for me, I was like, well, what? how can I humanize this? And we always talk about representation. Representation matters. And well, everybody knows a Mabel. Yeah, everybody knows a Mabel. We don't like, we may not like the Mabel, but we know a Mabel. So I need to represent this version of this type of person in a full way. And I feel like I did that just based on how people have responded. What Mabel needs most is love. And unfortunately, what she needs more than anything is self-love. And she has not done the work to really do that yet. And so what that what happens is she ends up sabotaging pl platonic relationships, romantic relationships. I think for Mabel, it was just, let me see if I can conquer, you know, because like we see it's a game for her. Do I think from the moment we meet her in episode one at the dinner table, talking to Lucille, that that was her plan? No. But what I do think is, you know, of course we're not with them every moment of the day, but I do believe she saw the, the cracks you know, and then, so, you know, fixing this here, fixing that there, and just kind of saying, well, I wonder if I can. And just, and then forgetting about the friend, right? Because those friends come and go, well, let me see. I wonder if I can't. And then I could, I, I believe Charles was going to cheat on with somebody, whether it was a lady at the church in the band, like somebody, he was going to, like his light was on. And I think she saw that and took full advantage of that. I think it's like, oh, you have something I want. Let me see. I want it. I want it. And that's it. And I get what I want kind of an energy. And then at that point, of course, she chooses her and her personal desires over a friendship, which I think as we see later in the season, she starts to rethink. But child, it's too late at that point. Way too late. The Charles was building a shed for you. 
but instead he was patching up your damn dry ass walls. I never meant to hurt you. That's why I broke it off with Charles. That's why you broke it off with Charles. Bitch, please. Stay away from me. And the, the scene with Nicole and I was so, with Lucille, who plays, played by Nicole Brianna White, was so powerful because more than anything, I think what hurts is being disappointed, like her being disappointed and, and, and betrayed. It's like when a parent tells a child, a, pa a parent could whip a child or tell the child, go in the corner or get a whooping with the belt. But if they look you in the eye and just say, I am so disappointed in you. Who it stings on a, on a deeper level than any whipping can do. And I feel like in that moment, which we did not rehearse, by the way, I, I would love, you know, I love people to know that. Like we sat down, it was the last scene of my whole season of the shooting for BMF. It was like two in the morning. We didn't rehearse. We came down to the kitchen table with the director. We just read the lines. We had no idea what was going to happen. In an earlier version of a script, like I selected, um, if people follow me on Instagram, you'll see a picture of me with my stunt double that day. I did have a stunt double. There was a rubber fry, a rubber skillet in the in the mix at one point, but creative, you know, team and you know the big higher ups, I guess, decided that was not the way to go. And I'm really happy with how it went um, because um, it was supposed to be an idea of what Lucille thought she wanted to do, and we would see that play out, and then she wouldn't really do it. But I think it played out so true to Lucille character. Like she wouldn't come that much out of herself, you know? Um, and so we just went for it. In the moment when we cut, I remember tell, talking to myself, you know, there's a lot of actors. It was like, get it together, Christine. This ain't about Christine, this is about Mabel. And Mabel does not have a, did a right to shed nan tear. She, uh -uh. she deserves this and she knows she deserves it. So I had to like coach myself up in the moment. And so what you see there in the close-ups and as we go back and forth, it's just a real truly um, connected moment between two actresses. And uh, it was, we, Nicole and I, when we hang out and talk off camera, you know, it was one of our favorite days and moments. I was mad at her though. After that, I didn't even say goodbye. I just was, do, I was out. We talked like two weeks later about the day, uh, but yeah, it was intense. I love the theater. It's definitely how I, I got started and grew up in, and my that was my training ground. And but at this stage in my life, I have no desire to do eight shows a week. <laughs> uh, it's a grueling schedule. There's nothing like it. The electricity of the audience and all the things. So I will never say never. I think perhaps sometime in the future, if I do like a limited engagement, a few months or something like that, perhaps. But right now, I definitely am in the sweet spot in my flow of being, I love the camera. As much as I love theater, I have learned to love working and acting for the lens. And I just want to do more of that. And I, I enjoy the perks of it. I enjoy my trailer and my, my, you know, just, can I get you some? Yes. Can I have some chips, please? Like I enjoy that. I enjoy like being on set. I love it's a new challenge now of, you know, in theater, you get one take. It's, and that's why it's the best training ground. There's no do-overs. There's no take two. Either you got it or you don't. You drop a line, fix it. So it's great training. But what I love now about film and TV is it's a different level of challenge. So you could have a deeply emotional scene where you're crying and doing all the things. And we're like, okay, guys, let's break for lunch. Then come back from lunch. We're going to pick up on that same spot, which you're closer. So that is a whole different level of uh, working. You know what I mean? Because you have to tap right back in. I got to get back to the place that I was, that I may have worked myself up to for a couple of hours. And I got to just pick up from there. And so that's a different skill set also. So it's also very challenging. I just got back from South Africa. I was shooting a show there for the past three months. I got back in February. And uh, it's a show called Classified. It's coming to Netflix Africa. And in the States here, it'll be on Amazon Freebie. And it's about a young girl, a teenager named Ella, who gets in a bit of trouble. She's kind of a, you know, rebel. And she's forced to go live with her dad and stepmom in South Africa, because that's where her mother, her great stepmother is stationed, because, um, I'm the CIA station chief in South Africa and her dad is an author and she hates it there. And so we get to see the show through the lens of this teenager being in this new place. Uh, but what ends up happening is my job, there's more to my job than meets the eye. 
And so I end up using her for some of my CIA work. And it gets very interesting. There's some action. There's some, uh, um, it's like a bit of th thriller, um, but also a nice mix of like, I think I always like to say people who are fans of Blood and Water and some of these shows that are getting pretty popular with the, on the teenage landscape, I think that will appease them and appeal to them also. So I'm excited about it because I'm going from playing strippers and, you know, harlots home wreckers to, <laughs> to kind of wrecking homes in a different way, you know, with a different facade. And I think that's a lot of fun to show my level and range. Well, I am a student of the law of attraction. I believe that we attract things, experiences, people, money, all of the things to us. And I spent years, I still do work on personal development. And I remember being in the early stages of being back in Los Angeles and being like, well, wait, if I'm a magnet and I'm attracting people, money, energy, like all these things to me. Well, I was like, well, hell, I can attract bookings. And so I'm also a big believer in mantras and affirmations. So as much as I would be in the mirror with my things like I am healthy, I am joy, I am beauty, I am this. I'm like, well, I am a booking magnet. You know, I remember Ian LeVincent said, anything you say after I am is a prayer. And I never forgot that. So I'm very intentional about what I say after I am. And so I just started speaking. I'm a booking magnet. I'm a booking magnet. And people will say, well, what, what came first, the bookings or you saying it? And I absolutely will tell you it's me saying it. It's me speaking life and me training people how to speak to me. So people would see me on the street. Even some of my acting clients would be like, they may not even know my name, but they're like, the booking magnet. And I'm like, that's right. Hey, booking magnet. I'm like, okay, yes. And now I'm speaking it back to them. So it's this beautiful boomerang, like ripple effect of this charged energy. Because what it is also is once you start speaking and calling yourself something, you now have to vibrate in that energy field to connect to that. And so when I started that, I just kept doing it. I would get t-shirts, all of it. I got a trademark now. I mean, it's the real thing. Um my life changed, my career changed. And I walk in a room and that also carried, it helped me build confidence and just this unshakable belief in myself and my gift. And it also makes me work hard. It makes me like, well, if I'm gonna call myself, be this audacious, well, you better get it together. And so it's just worked its way out, worked, worked its way through. And so even when I wrote my book, like I'm teaching other people how to be booking magnets and reminding everyone that I meet that they have that within them. And you have to be bold enough to just speak that for yourself. Well, I just believe in lifting as I climb. And I remember also being in Los Angeles the first time I moved here in um, 2011 and feeling stuck after Lion King. The Mandalay Bay show closed in Las Vegas of Lion King. I moved to LA and was like, all right, let's get it. I'm here to take be a star. And it was very disappointing and disheartening. And being talented and feeling stuck sucked. And when I shifted my life, moved back to Georgia, then came back years later, I was like, I'm gonna be the coach that I wish I had. But it didn't even start out as a plan to be a business, honestly. I just started going on Facebook Live every day just to document my own journey. Like, hey guys, I met Warner Brothers, had an audition today. Like, just, I was like, it was my mom and my cousins watching. Like, nobody was watching. And then what I noticed, I was just consistent. I like to gamify a lot of things in my life. Like, let me see if I can go live for 30 days and see what happens. Like, that's just kind of where I was. And people were like, who is this lady that keeps showing up spilling the tea? And so people started raising their hand and asking questions. And I was like, oh, y'all got questions for real? Like, people don't know that? And I was like, huh. So I would start giving answers. And then people were like, do you coach? I'm like, sure, okay. And that just built and built and built till we ended up building a community. Because I was like, all these people who are raising their hand, we need a place to meet so we don't feel alone. And so I created what's called, what's now called Hollywood Bound Actors. We have a podcast, a Facebook group, Instagram page. And so that's where we began to come together. I started doing a more of an official show called Actors Daily Bread. I wanted to feel like I was feeding the people something, <laughs> you know, like giving them some daily encouragement. And that it's just grown. And I'm definitely an entrepreneur at heart. I have always been. So I know where there's a need and there's supply and demand. And I saw that there were, there were not a lot of coaches that were teaching the way I was teaching. Very straight, no chaser. And not ever saying that my way was the only way, but saying, hey, this will, like it's almost like getting a cheat sheet. Like you missed class. Let me give you my notes. Let me tell you what I did that worked for me. You could try it, man. I've worked for you, but you could try it. And what started to happen is it was working for people. So to this day, I say, look, I, I'm just telling you what I did. So you can't ever tell me I'm wrong because this is my journey.
you could try it. I'm going to give you the cheat sheet and do what you will with it. So now we are a huge community. I do a conference once a year called Booking Magnet Live um, so that everybody can connect and feel like they're booking magnets. We, I do it here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, it'll be the next one's July 21st and 22nd. But yeah, it's just grown. I just honestly stayed obedient because people say, you don't got to do that. You, you, you booking. And it's true. I don't have to, but I feel like it's an assignment at this point. And it brings me great joy to see other actors winning and, and achieving their dreams. I always tell people, it doesn't matter what you do, whatever your line of work is, whatever your career is. Like at the end of the day, it's a light switch. It's on or off. There's no, the light ain't in between. It's either on or off. It's pos positive or negative. And at any given moment, we have a choice of the thoughts that we think. Is it positive or is it negative? And we all get caught in a negative loophole sometime. Well, we can reset that. Ooh, I caught myself. Ooh, be a negative. Let's go positive. Everything is a choice. And it just takes awareness and work. But once you do, like your thoughts change your life. And so that's the only place I'm, I'm operating on.